The Duke Blue Devils and the Alabama Crimson Tide are squaring off at the Mercedes-Benz Stadium in Atlanta, Georgia in week one. Let's discuss, shall we? Okay, so I'm sure there will be a lot of talk about losing our quarterback, Daniel Jones, who ended up being the sixth overall pick to the New York Football Giants in this year's NFL Draft. But come on, we weren't limited to just Jones. Our guy this year will be Quentin Harris. He's a fifth year senior with some experience under his belt. Last year, he had seven passing touchdowns and five rushing touchdowns in very limited time. He's also a very mobile guy, which is a lot better than having a sitting duck against Alabama's front seven. Look, I don't care if he has the speed of a brand new Ferrari purchased by David Dobrik and sponsored by SeatGeek. He ain't going nowhere against my stout Crimson Tide defense. And I see that you mentioned only his touchdowns. What? Were you not proud of his 50% completion percentage on 68 passes? Were you not just jumping for joy over his 437 yards on those 34 completions? I mean, come on. That's a whopping 6.4 yards per completion. That's nothing to scoff at. Maybe I deliberately left that part out, but the point is he could present problems and he does have some time in under center. You really need something like that against the Tide. You know what else you need? A running back as good as Deion Jackson, who was second team all ACC last year, just behind Travis Etienne of Clemson, which, um, I mean, you guys kind of know something about him, don't you? Check out these stats. 161 rushes last season for 847 total yards. That's a 5.3 yards per carry average. He had 10 rushes for 162 yards and three catches for 89 yards against Pitt. Wow. He had 14 rushes for 113 yards against Miami. That's an 8.1 yards per carry average. That's pretty dang good. He also threw in a touchdown in that game. And against that Clemson front seven that just killed you scrubs, he went 11 for 51. I mean, that's still 4.6 yards per carry. Not too shabby. Say what you want about us dookies. I feel pretty confident we can get it done on the ground to loosen up Quentin Harris. And I didn't even mention Britton Brown who will be returning from injury this season. Britton who? This is America, brother, and all we do is win. That's how I know Bama's America's team. Now I hear all this talk about a bunch of players that I or no one else has ever heard of, but let me give you some names that you and your mother and your auntie and your cousin and your sister and your brother and everybody you know and don't know has heard of. Dylan Moses. Does that ring a bell? I mean, he's only the best inside linebacker in the nation this year and will be filling the gap of Mac Wilson. How about old Jerry Judy? Ever heard of him? I mean, that guy can catch the ball anywhere, anytime, and do anything with it. He especially likes to do damage in the middle of the field, buddy. And he's probably gonna be a top five pick at the end of the day. And what about old Henry Ruggs? Now I heard that this boy ran a 4.2540. That means he ought to have a good time this season. And especially against your Dukies. Don't you think? And oh, 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 let's not forget about Tua Tugavailoa. And yeah, I know it took me three years to learn that name, but can you really blame me? I mean, he only played one half of football in 2018 because we was too busy beating everybody. Just absolutely beating the brakes off of him. He ain't even need to play two halves. He ain't even need to play in the third quarter. Now, what makes you so confident that won't be the case against y'all? Well, for starters, we have a pretty solid front seven that can really limit the big plays out of Alabama. I mean, we do have four returning starters on the defensive line. But did you know that those four starters that you're raving about had 8.5 sacks between all of them last season? Between all of them. All right, well, did you know that Mark Gilbert, one of our best secondary players, will be returning this year after a dislocated hip? Never heard of her, but I do know this. We have Nick Saban, the best dang football coach in the history of all time ever. Yeah, and we have David Cutcliffe. I rest my case. What is he, like a top 40 coach in 2019? I mean, that's cool, I guess. You know, you're a little cocky to have lost Damian Harris to the draft this season. And you're a little ignorant to not think that Najee Harris just won't fill that void. It's plug and play in Tuscaloosa, brother. Been that way for years. Mm-hmm. I bet you'll say that about your offensive line, too. You guys are literally moving pieces all over the place. Alex Leatherwood is coming from right guard to left tackle. You have a new center. And Deontay Brown is suspended because, well, that's what Alabama players do. You guys are an absolute mess in that unit. Tua better watch out. I'll bet your Duke engineering degree that Tua doesn't take one sack this entire game. I'll bet your single wide trailer that he does. I'll bet your school's entire lineup of scumbag fraternities that Najee Harris will go for 120 plus yards in this game, Tua will go for 250 plus, and this thing will be wrapped up by halftime. How about that? You really are just a cocky little fella, aren't you? Shouldn't have brought up the trailer. And it's a double wide for future reference. Hey, listen fella, just do me a favor. Remember this name, Mac 
Jones. Who is that? You'll see at the beginning of the third quarter. Comment below who you think is going to win, Alabama or Duke. I'm assuming it's going to be Alabama, so give me a predicted score so we can make it a little bit more interesting. Don't forget to subscribe either way if you love college football. I'll be here all season, ready to talk with you in the comments section. Sweet home Alabama. Well, my name is Jimmy. His name's Greg Buell. You and me and him, we went to the same school. This ain't cool. 